Welcome to C Sharp Design Patterns. I'm Keith Welch, and I'm the instructor for this course. This course is all about writing better code, helping you create better structure for your code and create more readable and maintainable code. In that I mean, we're going to show you patterns and techniques that allow you to create simpler code, but not lose, of course, the complexity and features that you need. But the code itself will be simple because it will follow known patterns, and it'll also be simple because you'll be breaking things up that normally you would put in really complex classes if you didn't know about design patterns. So your code will be simpler, more readable, and thus more maintainable. So we're going to look at design patterns, and we're going to do them in C Sharp, but the book itself was written in 1995, before C Sharp, of course. But the patterns themselves are language agnostic. They do require an object-oriented language, which conveniently we have, but the patterns themselves can apply to any number of object-oriented languages, and they've really stood the test of time. We'll, of course, introduce you to what the design patterns really are and what the intention is, and we'll go through 23 different patterns, and we'll take a look in depth on each pattern, first at a perhaps more academic level, and then with actual real code examples. And the patterns themselves are grouped into three basic areas, creational patterns that are, as you might guess, patterns for creating objects, and then structural patterns, which of course are structures of objects, and then behavioral patterns, what they actually do and how they go about doing it. Design patterns really focus on the interaction between classes, not so much the overall application architecture, nor are they really concerned about the inner workings of a class. They're really focused on the overall structure within the application with regards to how the classes interact with each other and how they relate. And inheritance and interfaces are used quite a lot. We'll go from the design patterns and move on to another pattern called the model view controller, or MVC pattern. Now MVC is more of an architectural pattern in that it really affects the overall application or the design of the overall application as opposed to the relationship between classes. It's really talking about layers when you're talking about models, views, and controllers. So we'll talk about the MVC pattern, and then we'll use ASP.NET MVC and run through a number of examples to show you the different layers within ASP.NET and how it's implemented. We'll also use the MVC app with the database so you can see how the database is created as a model layer. 